What's up everybody this weekend, Ron Spomer popped up uh, on my YouTube feed with a brand new video, which I clicked immediately because like really truly, his is, I, I would rather watch a new video from Ron Spomer than any channel on all of YouTube. He just has such a depth of knowledge that I really appreciate learning uh, from him. However, I did disagree with his most recent video about the flattest shooting rifle cartridges because of a project that I've been working on and I wanna share with you some of that data because the cartridges that he highlighted in that video actually aren't even in the top 10 of the flattest shooting rifle cartridges. All right, so let's dig into some numbers. Now, I haven't yet been able to meet Ron personally, but I know that guy is such a gentleman, he won't mind me giving my take on things. So what I've worked on for the last, like six months, I've spent hundreds of hours doing it, is I've gone through, I whittled the list down to 82 of the most popular center fire rifle cartridges. And I'm looking at the published loads um, from not just one load for each cartridge, but multiple, four, five, six, of every single one of those 82 cartridges. That took an incredible amount of time. Logged everything and averaged it all out so that I'm not looking at any one specific cherry-picked load for a cartridge, but I'm looking at a true average of what that cartridge usually is in terms of bullet weight and, and muzzle velocity, etc. So let's look at 600 yards. These are the cartridges that Ron looked at. The 220 Swift, on, in my database, looking at all those averages of the cartridges, the 220 Swift gets a tie for number three. The 7 Mag, number 19 out of 82 cartridges for flat shooting at 600 yards. 270 Winchester, number 23, 50 BMG, 338, 378 Weatherby, and the 65 Creedmoor dead last. So these numbers, that the number, you know, number three, number 46, all those cartridges, that's its ranking among 82 different cartridges at 600 yards. Now let's look at the cartridges he looked at at 1,000 yards. The 7 Mag uh, tops that list at number 17, 19, 24, 35, 37, 46. So as you can see, really this list at 1,000 yards, none of these are even in the top 10. And so now I know what you're wondering is, so what are the flattest shooting cartridges? For this, I need my trusty laptop. So at 1,000 yards, let's count them down. Um, the cartridge with the least drop is actually the 6.5300 Weatherby Magnum. That sucker is a hot rod. Now what fascinated me as I look down the list of the top 10 at 1,000 yards is how many different calibers we see. We see. I would have expected that at this distance, we're gonna really start to coalesce into certain calibers that do better at that extended range at 1,000 yards. But really, we see quite a variety still. Number two, 26 Nosler. Number three is the 28 Nosler. That's one that actually, when I was watching that video, I thought, wait a minute, where's the 28 Nosler? The 28 Nosler has such incredible ballistics. Then the 22 Creedmoor. This one really surprised me to see a 22 caliber cartridge sending a bullet out very, very flat at a thousand yards. I had to double check my numbers twice on that to make sure I didn't fat finger something. But that 22 Creedmoor is just shooting so fast that it is really still hanging on at a thousand yards. I'm sure it would drop off at 1500. Then the 6.5 Weatherby RPM, which is really the 6.5 PRC plus, right? It's, Weatherby has to have its stamp of its own cartridge, um, and it's it's really hanging in there. And the 6.5 PRC. Uh, I was really surprised to see that. I mean, I know the 6.5 PRC uh, is a you know essentially a Magnum 6.5 Creedmoor. But I was surprised that that 200 feet per second uh, of difference between the 6.5 Creedmoor and the 6.5 PRC really propped it up that much to shoot uh, significantly more flat at 1,000 yards. 
Now we'll take a look at 600 yards and you'll see it is a slightly different list. In general, the lighter cartridges are still going to be hanging on a little bit better at 600 yards and the slightly heavier car bullets are going to do better at 1,000 yards. And the reason for that is really the same thing that you've learned when you were throwing rocks into the river as a kid, right? If you get a tiny little pebble and you throw it as hard as you can, well, when that pebble leaves your hand, it's actually going faster than if you were to grab a big, nice baseball size rock and throw it, right? Because you're using your same uh, arm strength. Your arm isn't gonna move as fast when it has to hold a heavy rock as that pebble, right? And so when the pebble leaves your hand, it's going faster than that baseball size rock. But you can obviously throw that baseball size rock way further than that tiny little pebble, right? It's the exact same uh, thing with bullets. The speed and light is gonna be an advantage at short range, but in extended range, some weight is going to help. I want to point you over to a resource that I put up at backfire.tv. I put the whole database of 82 cartridges looking at these different distances so you can see what the flattest shooting cartridges are of all time. Best way to find it is just Google flattest shooting rifle cartridges and click on the article from Backfire. It should be near the top. But I do have to put a big however on this entire conversation. And that's because you can't actually have a list of the flattest shooting rifle cartridges. It really depends on what barrel did we use for that specific cartridge. Maybe it does better with a longer barrel. What specific load did we use for each of those specific cartridges? What, uh, what ballistic model are we going to use to determine the drop out to a thousand unless we're gonna go actually shoot every single cartridge and every single load with them, right? It's really, there is a lot of manipulation in there. And that's really why I created the Backfire Rifle Cartridge Database is because I saw the need for really coming up with a good average of what each cartridge could do. Also, I want to highlight that 6.5 PRC. Okay. I picked up a new rifle. What else is new? Actually, three different people recognized me in the gun store that day um, that I picked up this. This is a Tika Wilderness in 6.5 PRC. And really the reason I bought it is because just looking at the ballistics of the 6.5 PRC, boy, what an impressive round that is. The question that I still have on 6.5 PRC, do I feel comfortable shooting elk sized game with it? I think if I had a good broadside angle on the game, sure. If it was angling toward a little bit, quartering toward, oh, I don't know. I'm not sure that I, that I would do it. But I do really love the cartridge. Uh, hunting black tail deer on Kodiak Island this fall. I feel like this is going to be a great rifle. So we are going to do a review of this uh, Tika Wilderness 6.5 PRC coming up. Plus, I am buying so many scopes. You guys cost me so much money. I'm buying all the popular $500 and under scopes to do a great uh, backfire battle of the best scope under 500 bucks. So that's content to look forward to. Be sure to check out Ron Spomer's channel. I really do just love his channel. It just seems like a really good guy. Um, and so be sure to check that out as well and his take on this same subject.